Hey everyone, my name is Justin from JusticeGood.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to recreate James Blake's self-titled album cover in Photoshop. So this album isn't new actually, it came out in 2011, but it's actually a really good CD and it's got an interesting cover here so I thought we'd recreate it in Photoshop. So I'm going to be using a photo of this woman here instead of James Blake and bear in mind that there's some things in this album cover that were actually done with blending different photographs and photography techniques but we're going to do our best recreating it with just this one image. So I'll go ahead and just drag this photo onto this CD sized document and if you don't have a CD sized document you can just open a file new 4.75 inches by 4.75 inches document. So we'll place our portrait in place just about the same as the original. So next we want to get that bluish desaturated color that's in the original. So what I'm going to do is go to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Now in this hue saturation layer I'm going to colorize my photo and I'll use a hue of about 200. That's that nice pastel blue. And then I'll adjust the saturation down to about 15. And I'll turn the lightness up to about 15 as well. So let's tweak this until we get just about the same as the album cover. But now we want to give it some of that vibrance that's in the original. And the way we'll do that is by going to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Color Balance. Color balance is great for bringing in some vibrant colors into the highlights and shadows. So for the highlights, I'm just going to use some cyan and maybe just a slight bit of yellow, maybe negative three. And then for the shadows, we'll drag the blue slider up just about to 10 and maybe the cyan slider as well. I'll just do a little bit of cyan and blue on the midtones as well. So I'm just eyeballing it, but that looks about right for a similar color effect. And at this point, you can go back to the hue saturation layer and tweak things some more, like the lightness, just to give it that fade that's in the original. Once you're happy with the base colors, we're going to add some of that motion blur and blurry effect. So I'll take my original photo and I'm actually going to right click and convert it to a smart object. This is going to allow me to stack filters on it and adjust them as well. So now I'm going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and I'm going to use the Path Blur feature. If you don't have this because it's only in the newer versions of Photoshop, then you could just use the Radial Blur feature instead and just use a small spin setting. But if you have this Path Blur feature, what you can do is actually create a slightly curved blur, so a blur that goes up and then down again. So you can see the general shape of this curve here, and then I can adjust the speed of it, uh, the taper, and a few other things. So select OK. And now we've got a little bit of that left-right blur, but there's also another step I'm going to take. I'm actually going to Command J or right-click and duplicate this layer, and I'm going to move the entire layer a little bit to the right. So as you can see in the original photo, if you look at his collar and a few other pieces of the photo, you can see that there's a duplicate at a slightly lower opacity. So I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down to about 20 to 30%, but I don't want it to show on the entire image. So I'm going to go to Layer, Layer Mask, Reveal All. Now I'm going to grab my gradient tool and just using the black and white gradient and this setting right here, which is the circular setting, I'm going to click and drag so you can see now that we've just got a white glowing orb on her face, which only allows this layer to show right around the face. And I'm actually going to move it a bit so that the fingers weren't going on the mouth and creating that weird look. And now I'm actually going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. So we're just going to overall blur it about 5 pixels because if you notice in the original it's pretty blurred as well. And then I'm going to go to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And we'll just use a noise of about 8% Gaussian Monochromatic Distribution. 
So it's getting pretty close now. The only thing that I would say is a little bit off on mine is the color. It's just not as strong as that one. So actually I'm going to add some contrast by going to layer, new adjustment layer, curves, and I'll darken up the shadows a bit and I'll brighten up the highlights a bit. So that's going to give us a bit more exposure and contrast. And I think that matches the original a bit better. Next, we'll add our text. So I'll grab my text tool and I don't know exactly the font that they used in the original, but I'll just use a simple clean font like they had and you could write out whatever text you want. And also as far as the spacing goes, you want to make sure you double click your layer, open up the character panel or you can go to window character and set the tracking to something that's not too bunched together and set the size nicely as well. So I'll position this once I'm ready and then you could see in the original that the text even has some blur to it so but I'm gonna right click and duplicate this layer and then I'll move the duplicated layer with my keyboard keys on my keyboard and set one of those to about 20 percent and then I'll duplicate it again to the bottom left and set that to about 13 percent and then I'm just gonna filter blur motion blur those so it'll ask you to rasterize the layer that's fine you can go ahead and rasterize it because we still have our original text layer and I'll just blur each of these just a slight bit so motion blur I'll adjust the angle on this one a bit and then I can adjust the opacities to something that looks alright so there's the final James Blake effect of course, it's not exact because you could tell that they had him turn his head and maybe the camera was set to a long exposure so it created that blurry photo. But if you wanted to create this color look or that blurry look, then you could definitely use these tools like the radial blur or the path blur to create that motion sickness pale blue look. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, you could check out my playlist on a few other album recreations that I've done in the past and let me know what you guys thought below. Also, if you haven't checked out this album, check it out, it's a pretty good CD if you're into relaxed electronic music. If you like this video, definitely subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.